There are big promises from the new Northern Territory Chief Minister after the country Liberals won the election in a comprehensive way. Youth crime, of course, as we've seen, is a major issue for the region, as well as the cost of living. These issues also resonate on a federal level. So what lessons can the major parties learn from that result over the weekend? Joining me now is Red Bridge Group Director Simon Welsh. Simon, thanks so much for your time. I tend to think with the territory, there are very much territory issues at play. But the same issues are in significant pockets right around the country, youth crime being one of them. But also you can't um, separate crime and cost of living, can you? Because a lot of this crime is costing businesses and residents. Yeah, that, that's right, Laura. I mean, crime has its roots in economics. It, it is, it's an expression of, of an economic issue and an economic desperation mm. and disadvantage. But um, I, I think... There's a, there was a few things going on in the NT that I think, uh, you know, sort of have spooky sort of symmetries with, with things that are happening on the federal uh, election. It's not, and it's not often I would say this, but I think, you know, the Northern Territory election actually has some some resonance here for, for what might be coming federally in, yeah. in the sense that there's a few things. I, I think the first thing... Uh, is that we're, we're entering a stage of the cycle now with the broader economic conditions, just, just the overall sort of uh, cycle that we're in, that incumbent governments are going to be finding it very, very hard. I mean, we've seen that here. We're probably going to see it in Queensland. The polling would suggest that, that that's coming in Queensland. Mm. And, you know, Labor keeps losing uh, headroom in federally. And then there's some very specific things that happened in the Northern Territory that I think are real warnings for, for Labor, the, the, federally. The first is, you know, this failure to act on the issue that, that voters are talking about, that's animating voters, that they're really concerned about, that, you know, the fundamental issues that is, as, a, as we said, crime is an economic issue at its heart. It's a quality of life issue for the people affected. You know, it's a deep issue. And the failure to act on this deep issue turns, you know, a, a vote against you into a real reckoning you know, this is mm. real consequences for failure to act on, on critical issues. So whether it's crime, whether it's cost of living, the two things, as you rightly say, are connected. So you can see the you can see the symmetries here between Northern yeah. Territory and Federal. And then there's things, then in responding to that issue, I think this is where there's sort of real warnings and Labor federally still has time to do something about it. So in responding to the issue, the issue of the day, what they did was... They responded in such a way that they went chasing votes on their right wing that they'd already lost. Those voters on their right wing had already turned their back on the Northern Territory government. Mm. Uh, and they pitched a response to crime that was very much about sort of punishment, very right wing sort of framing, very right wing sort of policy. And that burnt them on the left, <laughs> on their left wing. So we saw the Greens, we saw the independents do very well uh, in the election in the Northern Territory. I'll emphasise that again, you know, Greens and Independents doing well in the Northern Territory uh, mm -hmm. on the progressive side because of they, that, that's kind of lurched to the right. And I think that's where there's a real lesson for Labor here is, A, they've got to respond to the economic circumstances of the day, yeah. but in doing so, they can't do a lurch to the right and go chasing those right-wing voters who they've already lost, let's be honest, it's, and lose those voters on the left. It's extraordinary, really, when you look at the result, because I was looking at the booths as they came in, some of those uh, Alice Springs seats, and the Greens were out polling Labor. So uh, people were voting um, mostly uh, for the CLP, then the Greens, and then Labor. Um, that absolutely should send a shockwave through everyone, and it points to, uh, you know, minority Greens um, Labor government at potentially the federal election. We're not there yet, but that's certainly the risk. The other thing you talked about was um, incumbent governments and how difficult it is. But there was more of an it's time factor uh, in the Northern Territory. The Labor government been in for, you know, uh, more than one term. In Queensland, it is the same. But for Anthony Albanese, is there less patience at a federal level? Is incumbency still difficult even after one term? I think there's a real risk there. I mean, okay. it, the sort of the, the degree of risk to a one-term government is kind of proportionate to the degree of pain in the electorate. And mm. the degree of pain, pressure, stress in the electorate is profound at the moment. So I think that creates risk. And the other thing that I think creates it is when we're talking to folk in focus groups and all the rest of it, 
a lot of people, they're feeling this pain, but they're not yet kind of connecting it to the party political game. So they're critical of the government, but they haven't really kind of made a party political decision about where that's going to land. Right. If those voters start to vote on that pain or they start to you know connect that yeah. dot when they're thinking about their vote intention, you could well see a circumstance where Labor sort of remembers the heady days when their primary had a three in front. Yeah, right. um, so that so there could be there could be a plunge. I mean, in the absence of them doing anything else mm. between now and the election, yeah, my money would be on the plunge wow. as opposed to a recovery. They well, so need I mean, to be doing so, something. So we're running out of time. I just want to get one more question in. When you look at that, I mean, Labor would be getting focus book a group feedback all the time. They're doing their own impo um, internal polling at the moment um, to see how everything is going. What do you make of the timing of Jim Chalmers coming out with a personal attack on Peter Dutton, calling him not just divisive but dangerous? What do you make of the timing there and will it go down well? Look, I think for a large part of the electorate, Peter Dutton is still undefined. So clearly they're trying to define him and invade the advantages of Hmm. It's not the space I would want to be in. if I was the government right now. I would be focusing on the game, and the main game is cost of living. I think the Treasurer has a huge role to play in that. You know, we I think Labor's way out of this is a kind of hawk keating double act where you've got a strong Treasurer talking the economic game, talking the economic vision. That's their way out of it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if, if anyone's listening to me now, back at Labor HQ right now, that's what I would be saying. That's where the, the focus needs to be. Very interesting. Always great to talk to you, Simon. Thanks, Laura.